It's better this way. Let the darkness come over and the night would unfold as an abyss. If no, that means I won't be able to die. Would be drinking the life from your palms forever. Those are the lines written by Marina Tsvetaeva to her lover and friend Sofia Parnok. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more in a moment. Hello and welcome to our five minutes with Katerina Russian poetry. Today we are talking about the love of uh, two great poets of the beginning of the 20th century, Marina Svetaeva and Sofia Parnok. Before we start, I want uh, to ask you if you are a native uh, English speaker, uh, let me know in the comment box, uh, would you use the term poetess towards uh, female poets or you would say poet? Because it's a very interesting question, even in Russian language. For example, in the beginning of the 20th century, when both Marina and Sofia lived, the term poetess existed, but another poetess, Anna Akhmatova, or poet, as I should say, because she said that poetess is a diminutive term and it undermines the value of the poetry itself. So, if uh, the poetry is great, we only should use the masculine term to it. As for me, living in Ukraine and uh, being the modern woman, I want to speak about it this way. I would use poetess as a term in Russian or Ukrainian language uh, because I think that uh, it doesn't matter what the gender of the person who wrote something, who wrote the lines, uh, but the lines itself uh, are speaking about the quality of the poetry. So it's a very discussion and interesting question to think over why we should use poet to all genders, why we should use poet as and poet uh, towards different genders, and if we should consider gender when we talk about the poetry. So let me know your idea because I'm a little bit uh, interested in this question and uh, that would be great if you can share your thoughts. Going back to Marina and Sofia, they were met in 1914 and at the time Marina was 23 years old and uh, Sofia was 29 years old. Uh, as for Marina, she was married at the, at the time and had a daughter uh, who was two years old. And uh, Sofia was uh, uh, talking about herself, she was open lesbian and uh, uh, she uh, made the coming out for a long time. Everybody knew that she is in love only with women. So at this point, uh, they met uh, in one of the houses of their common friend uh, and uh, they loved each other starting from the very beginning, which uh, resulted in one and a half years uh, of uh, the relationships. Uh, meanwhile, in these relationships, uh, Sofia was uh, free and uh, dedicated to Marina, and Marina had a husband and then a male lover. Let's uh, read together the poem written by Marina Svetaeva to her new at the time friend and future lover Sofia Parnok. Вы счастливы? Не скажете, едва ли. И лучше пусть. Вы слишком многих мне целовали. Отсюда грусть. Всех героинь шекспировских трагедий я вижу в вас. Вас, юная трагическая леди, никто не спас. Вы так устали повторять любовный речитатив. Шигунный обод на руке бескровной красноречив. Я вас люблю. Как грозовая туча над вами грех. За то, что вы язвительны и жгучи. И лучше всех. За то, что мы, что наши жизни разны, в дне дорог, за ваши вдохновенные соблазны и темный рог, за то, что вам, мой демон крутолобый, скажу прости, за то, что вам хоть разорвись над гробом, уже и спасти, за эту дрожь, за то, что неужели не снится сон, за эту ироническую прелесть, что вы не он. This poem was uh, written on the 16th of October 1914, exactly after the first meeting of Marina and Sofia, where according to the memoirs of people who were present at this evening, 
Marina gave birth to Sofia the first flower. It was the rose hanging on the table of the host family. And uh, these relationships, uh, they were quite uh, tragic because uh, the society couldn't accept them. The uh, women themselves uh, saw, as you can read in this poem, Marina uh, thought that uh, it's something wrong to do it. And uh, she, uh, in the very beginning, she was uh, thinking that uh, these uh, relationships uh, cannot result in anything good. And on top of that, uh, at some point, uh, Marina wanted to have a child with Sofia, and of course, it was impossible. So there would be, uh, at the time, only men would be needed for this purpose. And all this, uh, and as well as the generosity, they uh, made this uh, first uh, big uh, hindrance towards the future of this relationship. And uh, in the very middle of it, Sophia writes a poem foreseeing what would happen next. Let's read uh, it together. This is the poem of Sophia Barnovka answering to the feelings of Marina or describing her own feelings and her own generosity. Этот вечер был тускло палевый. Для меня был огненный он. Этим вечером, как пожелали вы, мы вошли в театр Неон. Помню руки от счастья слабые, жилки, веточки синевы. Чтоб коснуться руки, не могла бы я, натянули перчатки вы. Ах, опять подошли так близко вы и опять свернулись пути. Стало ясно мне, как не подыскивай, слова верного не найти. Я сказала, во мраке карие и чужие ваши глаза. Вальс тянулся и виды Швейцарии на горах турист. И козла улыбнулась, вы не ответили. Человек не во всем ли прав? И тихонько, чтоб вы не заметили, я погладила ваш рукав. This uh, the point of time these relationships uh, are starting to be more and more like the love-hate relationships and not only the love relationships, which is reflected in the poem written by Marina in the middle of 1915. Let's read it together. Хочу у зеркала взглянуть и сон туманящий. Я выпытать, куда вам путь и где пристанище. Я вижу мачта корабля и вы на палубе. Вы в дыме поезда. Поля с вечерней жалоби. Вечерние поля в росе над ними вороны. Благословляю вас на все четыре стороны. Here we can clearly see the sense of departure, the sense of some kind of transport, and uh, the sense of insecurity reflected in the mirrors. And as the way of transport, uh, Marina mentions uh, both board and uh, train as uh, the symbolical uh, departure feeling. And uh, actually, Sophia answers with uh, a very similar poem, but written in her own manner. I think you can feel it when I'm reading it. The rhythmical lines are very different. Uh, Marina is uh, following her earlier session. We read together her early poetry to her sister Asa, for example, and here we can still see this uh, rhythmical line. You can go and watch and compare, actually. So in 1914, the lines are quite consistent with the early poetry. And Sophia uses longer lines and uh, she is actually still in her search so her poetry is quite different and even two poems written within a short period they show you a different rhythmical style so let's read the kind of an answer written by Sophia reflecting the same feelings actually which we are reading in this poem itself снова знак к отплытию нам дам дикой ночью из пристани мы выбили снова сердце сумасшедший капитан Правит парус неотвратимой гибели. Вехре шар луны пустили в пляс, И тяжелые валы окрест в лохматии. Помолись о нераскаянных, о нас, о поэт, о спутник, всех искателей. Nothing lasts forever, so this love and this feelings, they were also meant to end and uh, in the end uh, which happened uh, in winter 1916 uh, Sofia found uh, another woman and uh, Marina was uh, going back towards uh, the relationships with uh, men in her life. These uh, two great women they left uh, 
more poetry and this uh, was a very small part of their political inheritance but a very important one when we read about true mutual feelings which are developing you see how their love is born how it develops into very ambivalent feelings and how it dies it uh, doesn't mean that we know about love something but such poets uh, or poetesses uh, can show us a little bit of the internal world and sometimes can express our own feelings nowadays marina Svetlana is the representative of the silver age in russian poetry and is more famous than sofia panoka but uh, i think it's not really fair because uh, uh, Sophie Panov also left uh, so many great poems that we should talk about them, we should read them and of course enjoy this uh, description of uh, the internal reality of the soul of a person. Let me know your ideas and as usual please share your favorite poets, uh, share your favorite authors with me. I'm always excited to read your comments. Also, don't forget about your likes and if you can, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. That's how I can create more of such videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you very soon in our next episode. Goodbye for now.